Hello, this is Leo Gray on behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs. Visit us online at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook. Check out the schedule of daily offerings and check out the tip jar where you can make contributions online via Zelle or Venmo or PayPal. You can make a one-time contribution or you can set up recurring contributions and support these donation-based offerings. Today will be a shorter segment focusing on improving circulation in the legs. And we'll start out, I'm starting out sitting. You could start out kneeling or lying down if you would rather. And we're just gonna start with some diaphragmatic breathing, diaphragmatic, uh, for pertaining to the diaphragm. So your diaphragm, in here, it moves up and down. It's a muscle that is both voluntary, meaning that it will respond to direction from your conscious mind, and involuntary, meaning that if you don't think about your breathing, when you don't think about your breathing, your breathing happens anyway. The muscle will move on its own. So we'll be directing the diaphragm, focusing on it. And as you know, if you practice yoga before, the way that you think about your breathing will change your breathing. So we can do various things with the breath. Focusing on the movement of the diaphragm will bring deeper breaths, will bring more oxygen into the bloodstream, will help improve circulation. So one way to focus in this manner is what we call three-part breath. We focus on the inhale with filling the belly with air, and then the rib cage, and then the chest. And as we exhale, emptying the air from the chest, rib cage and then the belly and this focus helps with a more active and conscious movement of the diaphragm and it's really impossible to do it and talk at the same time because as you know speaking is exhaling but it's inhaling fill the belly fill the rib cage fill the chest exhaling from the chest from the ribs from the belly so that was pretend i wasn't inhaling while i was saying inhale looks like this. And you can say one, two, three, three, two, one. You can say belly, ribs, chest, chest, ribs, belly. Many people find it helpful to place their hands on their torso to feel the air entering and leaving those three regions. But just practice that for a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's up to you. How long does it feel good? How long are you comfortable in the position you started in? Do you come to another position, get comfortable again and then do some more? It also has other great effects that can be very common like any directed breath can be, or many directed breaths can be. Some directed breaths we do, of course, are not calming there innervating and invigorating and we do them for other other goals, other aims. But it's inhale, two, three, exhale, chest, ribs, belly, inhale, fill belly, fill ribs, fill chest, exhale from the chest, from the ribs, from the belly. I'm exaggerating the sound of my breath to Divide it into three segments. You don't have to have that pause that you may be hearing. I'm just guessing it's reaching the microphone. Maybe it's not. And incidentally, you can do whatever you like with your hands while you're sitting in whatever position is comfortable to you. Maybe your hands are at rest, maybe they're more actively grounded here or here, or they're receptive, or they're focused, or they're in touch with the movements. You can even move your hands a bit and think of breathing into your hands, filling your hands as your belly, ribs, and chest fill, and as your hands letting go of that air as the chest, the ribs, and the belly empty out. You 
and you can try out different positions. Maybe you feel more into this movement in a different position. Maybe lying down works better for you. Maybe that's with bent legs. Maybe that's with legs extended. So we'll move on to some more active posture movements to support improving circulation in your legs. So maybe you'd have the thought that by sitting and breathing, you could do it. Maybe the next ones will be more obvious to you. Take a sip of the water. I recommend always having some water around, but that's what works for me. Lunges, there's an obvious one that maybe, maybe it's obvious that one just can improve circulations in the legs. So a lunge can look like this, a high lunge, or it can look like this with the back knee down, you can have the back toes uncurled. So listen to your legs, listen to your body, and it doesn't have to be about how the legs feel. Maybe it's a balance thing and you're not comfortable on a high lunge. You could be within range of a wall or a sturdy piece of furniture and grab on with one hand to support you in the higher lunge, maybe even to support you in the lower lunge. I'll give another view here. In a lunge, we want all 10 toes facing in the same direction. And this is because we're going to do some movements with our knees. You want your knees to track in line with your toes for stability and strength. Knees are complicated and knees can be injured. And if you go off to one side, like that, instead of in line with your toes, not only is the movement less stable, but it's also likely to cause problems. Not limited to a fall. You can hurt your knees without ever falling. And so you might have your hands at your heart. Bring your shoulders above your hips. You might have your hands on your hips. You can have your arms up, or out, curl to the mouth, or out and bent. I'm going to move, exhale, sink forward in the hips, inhale, glide back. Now, in the high lunge, don't let the knee go forward more than the ankle. That'll hyperextend your knee. So maybe they're small movements, maybe they're big. And then when you come up, don't lock the front leg. The back leg's not locked either. Some people just keep the back leg long. Some people bend the knee back there as well. Listen to your body. What's right for you and your knees and your balance. And if you're in the lower lunge, it's the same rocking of the hips. Now it's okay if my front knee goes forward past my ankle because my center of gravity is lower. I'm not putting the same kind of force on my knee here. Whether you're in high lunge or low lunge, I'm just going to switch legs for the sake of balance in my body. You can, as you sink forward, lower your arms to parallel or to canvas. And as you glide back, you raise your arms, or you can just keep your hands at the heart, keep your hands on your hips. And maybe, depending on what's going on in your muscles, it feels good to spend some more time at the front movement or at the back of the movement and pause for some breath. So pause the breathing. Let the breath flow smoothly and continuously. So that's lunges. The next standing thing that we can do that's great for circulation in the legs is triangle pose. Now I didn't say this earlier. I practiced earlier. I'm am warmed up as we get into some of these other poses. I'm presuming as you do this that you have prepared yourself. So this is not a fully fleshed out full body practice. This is a focused video for circulation in your legs. So do what you need to do. We're gonna do triangle pose. So maybe the lunges are enough prep for you to do triangle pose. Maybe there's something else you like to do before you do triangle pose. I am partial to incorporating triangle pose in a warrior series. So here I'm putting my feet and my legs to warrior two, and there's shoulders above hips, arms out to the sides like this. So this is warrior two. From this side, it looks like this. So one foot is behind the other. Some folks say have the front heel in line with the back heel. Some folks say front heel in line with the back arch. I say anywhere in that range is totally fine.
So to go from order to two to triangle. Lengthen that bent leg. Now neither leg is locked, keeping a little bend in each knee to protect the knees. And then I'm going to shift so my shoulders aren't above my hips. And this is sort of a funny movement if you haven't done it before, or if you haven't done it a lot. And you might think of like the string on a bow, like an archery bow. Draw the back hip back. It's a funny movement. And then slide the front hand forward. So my torso is still long, my arms are still parallel to the ground. Then I tip to come to triangle. So triangle, picture your hands stacked, maybe you don't have your video on or a mirror, but imagine the top hand directly above the bottom hand. Now the bottom hand can hang there in the air. It can press to the leg, press to the front, press to the inside, press to the outside. Depending on where you're at with your triangle, maybe, you touch the ground with your hand, maybe you put a block under your hand, and that could be fingertips on the block, hold the block in your hand, make a fist, you put the block under your fist, I left the block over there. Just imagine there's a block. But this is great for circulation in the legs. This is also great for your breathing, because this is a posture where your lungs open the way up. Excuse my hand going out of frame. And to come out of triangle pose nice and slowly, I like to bring this hip. So this hip, in now, reach this hand forward like there's a rope there or something. And however you want to come out with the feet, just maybe small movements, slow movements, take your time. And do it on both sides. You don't have to do it from warrior two, that's just my preference. Draw, get the long legs, draw the back hip back, slide the front hand forward, tip, find the triangle. And again, your hand can be anywhere, whatever works for you. Anywhere in that range. Time for another sip of water, hot day here. Next standing pose, very active for the legs and great for circulation is chair pose. Chair pose is when we sit back and stand in and reach up. In the side, it looks like this. So it's a release in the front of the hips, in the back of the knees, in the front of the ankles. Arms are up, the shoulders relax down away from here is a little down. Don't scrunch your shoulders way up. Let them release a bit. And keep breathing. Now, feet are parallel, knees are lined up. Some people put their feet right together. Many people do actually. It's not comfortable for me, so I don't do that. Utkatasana, it's called in Sanskrit, also known as intense pose. <laughs> and maybe it looks easy, that comes with practice. The best thing I've learned about chair pose, I'll share with you now, I got from an Alexander Technique teacher, my friend Cecile Rayner in Boston, wonderful teacher. And she's ta taught us that the key to chair pose is in your hip sockets, that's where the pose starts. So to find your hip sockets, you put your thumbs on either side of your pubic bone here. And when you press there, it's like a mechanical effect. There's a release, it's sort of like taking a parking brake off of this vehicle. So pressing the hip sockets sends your tush back. So it triggers the release in the knees. So the legs are still engaged, yet they're releasing now. And it's helpful to think of releasing. So you can come in to chair in the lower body and then in the upper body like that. Various ways to come into it. And make sure you're breathing. Just think of releasing back down to the ground. So you don't have to hold it this long. Maybe you don't hold it as long, but you do more repetitions of it. And we can play with variations in cherry. You can do some arm movements. You can do some twists. If you go for this twist here, keep your hands centered, keep them pressing to your sternum, keep your spine long and your knees lined up. Exhale, twist. And don't get hung up about this, but depending on where you are in your twist, sometimes we bring elbow outside the knee, keeping the hands centered. And then if you like, sometimes we open our hands, sometimes we feel jazzy, we go for it. 
fuller, more open expression. But we don't have to. If you're partial to a twist while you're in chair, it does make it hard to talk. You can do various stages of that. Sometimes you just need an exhale from the mouth and the hand down. While I'm down here, another common way to come into chair, once you've got that hip socket release thing, is from here in the fold, you can let your arm swing and use momentum. Let that swinging get bigger and go from here to your chair. That can be a real nice transition. So come out, inhale, lengthen the legs. Exhale, let the hands down. Definitely need some more water after that. Okay, the next two, downward facing dog and pigeon. And I pair them like this because I like to come to pigeon from downward facing dog. So I'm just gonna go to my downward facing dog. As you know, this comes in the middle of the sun salutation, so maybe you flow through sun salutations to get to your thing. So downward dog is great for improving the circulation in your legs. When you first get there or anytime you get there, you can do some pedaling with your feet. And this doesn't have to be limited to setting the heels closer to the ground and feeling the lengthening throughout the back of the body. Maybe you roll your feet right over. One at a time, press the top of the foot to the mat as the other heel goes down. It's not quite pedaling anymore. It's going to be a pedaling movement. But whatever feels good, sway from one hip to the other. No matter how you vary this, you are actively increasing circulation in your legs while you're in downward facing down. So maybe you don't like long holds like this. Maybe you come out, maybe you take child's pose and come back up. Maybe you just flow through some sun salutations and spend more time. To come to pigeon from here, what I like to do is this, inhale, lift the leg, bend the knee, stack the hips. Now here you might flex your foot, make circles with your knee. If you like to do this one, you can flip, like people like that. Just including some variations, I will get to the pigeon. I will include another bit of prep because it's what I'm partial to the pigeon. I like to come forward to here and come to star. My legs perpendicular, maybe fall star. I just like these jazzy things, maybe you don't, that's okay. And then from here with the leg up high, exhale, draw your knee towards your wrist, your ankle towards your other wrist. Put that leg down, the lower leg down, back knee down, back toes uncurl. And don't go down yet. Press into the floor, maybe even tent your fingers. You could have a box in your hands, inhale, lift your head and chest open, and then line. Exhale, release, forward and down. Now, pigeon is all about surrendering to gravity and breath. So this isn't about pushing the hips towards the floor. It's about inviting them to open and lower on their own, just inviting them to open. As they open, the lowering will happen to whatever degree. They'll open to whatever degree they need to. Inviting them to do so is more effective than telling them to do so. So as my hips open and settle, maybe I scoot my arms forward, my elbows forward. Maybe I scoot this back knee back. As the hips open and settle, I might rest my head on the ground or on my hands or on the block or on the prop. And stay as long as you like. Maybe half a minute in pigeon is plenty for you or even too much. Maybe you like to spend it two minutes, three, five, whatever. You don't have to time it. When you come out of your pigeon, usually I spend longer. <laughs> but you don't need to watch me just laying there. If you like, you can explore a bind here after you get tall and long again. You could bend this back leg, you could reach back and take hold of foot or ankle. You could use this trap here around your foot. I like to use the opposite hand. Some people like to use that same hand on that side. It makes me very tippy. My body wants to tip over. And for me, if I'm gonna 
talk about head to neck. We'll talk about what I prefer to do as a counter movement afterwards and help back up to three legged down dog, three legged dog, <laughs> bend your knee, stack your hips, flex your foot, make circles with your knee. If you did that before. And why do we do that? Well, pigeon, for all the great benefits in the joint, temporarily compresses the ephemeral artery, biggest vessel bringing blood into that leg. Now, why, Leo, would you pinch your femoral artery if your goal is to improve circulation? It's because when I release from that posture, with that artery being temporarily closed off, and I do this counter movement and help speed the blood back into that big artery, it's more blood than normal. So the temporary restriction upon release, and especially with the power movement, increases the circulation. So we're sort of nudging our body around, just like we, we manipulate the breath, joints, muscles, and sure, circulation. We also manipulate our nervous system in various ways as we practice, right? Movements we do, positions we come to, breathing we do, even things, things we do with our mind. Your brain is the center of your nervous system. It reaches all the other parts of it. And one more water break, I think. Just one more pose. So maybe you're ready to wrap up your practice. Maybe not. Maybe you want to repeat some of these things. Legs up the wall. We call this pose. I like to come and do it like this. Bring one hip right against the wall. Reach the hand out and back a bit. And it's it's a funny movement, but this is how, this is how I like to do it. You tip and spin at the same time. So you're moving on two axes. So lean back, legs go up the wall, and you end up like this. And maybe your butt is on the wall, maybe it's not. That can be a matter of preference. It could be a matter of anatomy, flexibility, whatever. The goal is having the legs lifted up. Now, maybe in your space, you don't have that kind of access to the wall. Maybe you're not in a space of the wall, maybe you're outdoors. Instead of the wall, you could put your legs on a piece of furniture. You can rest your legs on a tree if you're outside or a picnic table, maybe a beach chair, maybe a rock. <laughs> But this can be used, right? Leg, legs up the wall or similar position can be used in place of Shavasana, both pose, traditional way to end practice with lying flat on the ground. You can get comfortable, close your eyes if you like, and just focus on your breathing or on an intention you set for yourself at the start of your practice. And legs up the wall doesn't have to just be like this, you could, Plant your feet, plant the soles of your feet on the wall. You might bring the soles of your feet together. You might have your legs going up the wall and have them close together, or maybe it feels good to let the legs open out. So try different variations and see what works for you. See what duration feels good to you. I know for me, I can enjoy this for quite a while with, with legs bent and the back of the knee resting on the edge of the bed, for example, I could take a nap. <laughs> and if I'm doing this legs up the wall for Shavasana, it, for me, it does tend to, if I'm the student, <laughs> not the teacher, I can nod off 
and what can happen with your legs off the wall. If you, if you do start to nod off in your Shavasana is your legs will tend to open on their own as your feet play out and these little movements in your feet will maybe wake you up. I know it's not just me, but this is allowing circulation to reverse. This is letting things come out of your legs and your feet. So all the time that we spend standing and sitting and walking, the effects of gravity, cumulative effects of gravity, things get stuck in legs and feet. So letting that stuff that's stuck flow back into the system would be very helpful. So sure, with my legs higher than my heart, for now, there is less blood flow to my legs. This is just a fact of gravity. But when they come out, because the stuff that was stuck has worked its way out, the circulation to the legs will be improved upon coming to horizontal, coming back to vertical, standing, sitting, walking. So to come out of legs up the wall, I'm partial to bending my legs and tipping the keel position. You could keep your legs extended and tip. It's sort of, to me, more awkward. <laughs> Fetal position is one that we're, many of us are very accustomed to using as a transition from Shavasana to seated. We typically come back to sitting on the end at the end of practice if we're practicing with others. We come to this. Thank you for sharing this practice with me today. The light within me sees and honors that same light within me. Take care of those legs. They do a lot for you. <laughs>